Hey folks, for the last couple of years I've been using this as my main motherboard in my personal Ryzen rig. ASRock's value oriented X370 board, the killer SLI, and it's handled pretty much everything that I could throw at it. Overclocking a 1700 to 4GHz, yep, no problem. Decent memory speeds, yep, it's got that too. Ryzen 2000 and 3000 support with a simple BIOS update and no hiccups. Yeah, it's done that perfectly fine. And for me, this stands as a testament to why the AM4 platform and Ryzen as a whole was such a great ecosystem to buy into at launch. Now on the third generation and second architecture, the same motherboard is now running the 3700X overclocked with no problems whatsoever. So with all that said, it might come as a bit of a surprise that today we're swapping over for this. ASRock's X570 Steel Legend. While the X370 board works absolutely fine with my 3700X, motherboards as a whole, well, they've kind of advanced over the last few years, and while being serviceable and completely functional, compared to newer boards, these first generation options do lack some of the flourishes that are found on the newer boards. So let's take a little bit more in-depth look at the Steel Legend X570. It's pros, it's cons, and why I think it should probably be on your list if you're looking for a mid-range X570 board at the end of 2019, and as we go into 2020. Right off the bat, and if you've seen the B450 Steel Legend, you'll notice that it's got a similar aesthetic, with the Steel Legend style camo print, and it is one of the more white boards available on the X570 platform, if that's the kind of PC aesthetic that you're looking for. Here in the UK, you can comfortably find one of these new for around 200 quid from the likes of CCL or Overclockers UK, which all things considered is probably at the lower end of the X570 spectrum. Keep your eyes peeled though, as prices on eBay and Amazon are often a good bit less, and do crop up with discounts of around 5 or 10%, especially around the holiday season. In the box, you get to see the usual assortment of accessories. There's no I.O. shield here, which is great, as like the Phantom Gaming X that I looked at a while back. It's integrated, which is great to see. You get a few SATA data cables, a couple of M.2 screws, and some fairly hefty manuals. Nothing out of the ordinary, and everything you need to get going. The board itself is powered by the usual 24-pin connector, along with an 8-pin and 4-pin CPU supplemental power connector, which is going to be more than enough to keep even a 3950X fed and satisfied. We get four DDR4 DIMM slots, which if you're using a Ryzen 3000 CPU, offers up a listed support of up to 4666MHz, although of course this is still going to be dependent on the silicon quality within your CPU as well as the motherboard support. It's good to see a higher list speed supported, and it means that we're going to have no problem whatsoever running at the Ryzen sweet spot of around 3200 to 3600. On the board, we get the kind of expected assortment of ports. We get an SPI TPM header, the usual power LED speaker and hard drive indicators, as well as the front panel audio, a couple of USB 2.0 headers, and two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers, as well as what is interesting for an AMD board, a Thunderbolt header. Elsewhere on the board, you get a total of six 4-pin PWM headers, two just north of the CPU, one near the rear I.O., one on the opposite side of that, near the SATA ports, and two on the bottom. Up top, we've got a dedicated RGB header for AMD's fans, and on the south side of the board, there are further headers for both addressable RGB and regular RGB accessories, so you're going to have plenty of options here to plug in whatever you want. Moving up the board, the X570 Steel Legend features a higher end audio setup than my old X370 board did, or the B450 version of the Steel Legend. Moving up from a Realtek ALC892 audio codec, coupled with gold caps, to an ALC1220, which is the same one as is used on higher end boards like the Phantom Gaming X. A nice to have for sure, but unless you're using really high end audio equipment, even the more basic audio codecs found on some of the B450 boards would be fine, but it is still nice to have. Around the back, we'll find plentiful USB connectors, including a Type-C, your DisplayPort and HDMI, along with the audio I.O. and Gigabit Ethernet. 
There are also two circular holes on the rear I.O. which accept a Wi-Fi antenna. This is not included in the box, but there is a dedicated M.2 slot, so you can expand the board very easily to integrate Wi-Fi with an appropriate M.2 Wi-Fi module. Additional to the Wi-Fi M.2 slot, there are also two other M.2 slots which support solid state storage, and these are located under the heatsink which also cools the X570 chipset. A big difference is the ability to use PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives with the X570 platform when using a Ryzen 3000 CPU. But there is another difference which also changes from my X370 board and quite a lot of the older first and second gen Ryzen boards. And that is M.2 type distribution. You see, on my killer SLI board, one slot supported both SATA 3 and NVMe SSDs, while the second supported M.2 slot on that board was SATA 3 only. Now we still get one multifunctional slot which supports both, but the topmost slot is now PCIe NVMe compatible only. Now this is a bit of a pest for me as I've got two SATA 3 M.2 drives in my build and it would be great if both slots were multi-type compatible, but it does make sense that they're looking forward and they've standardised on the higher end of the two specs. Complementing the two M.2 slots, we find eight SATA 3 6GB per second ports at the side of the board, and being an ATX size board, we get a standard complement of two full sized 16x slots, obviously PCIe Gen 4 if you're using a Ryzen 3000 setup, and three PCIe 4.0 by one slots as well. The Steel Legend, it still ticks all the boxes for me. It's simple but interesting, functional but feature packed and when fitted into a well-lit case, the RGB element, well, I still think it looks awesome. The inclusion of both types of RGB headers adds a bit of flexibility on how you can use it, and with plentiful headers located in sensible locations, means it's a board which won't force you to scramble around routing cables and running out of ports. What I found quite interesting with this board is the VRM design, especially when compared to the higher end very nice Tai Chi model. The board features what is advertised as a 10 phase VRM for the V core and the SOC. Now this is split into an 8 plus 2 design and it's not a native 10 phase board as it does use the AMD specific ISL69147 as its primary controller. And this is a 7 phase controller, so we really know from that that we're going to be using doublers here. The phase doublers are ISL 6617s and are actually pretty smart parts, able to adjust on the fly to keep current balanced, while the power stages, Vichy SIC 634s, are more than suitable for even a Ryzen 9 CPU. The 8 stage V core setup could supply about 400 amps of current in theory, but the reality is that even the 3950X is only ever going to really see half that if you're pushing it really hard. The SOC VRM doesn't actually use doublers, so here we get two real phases, meaning that the end result of this board is essentially a 4x2 plus 2 design. For reference, the Tai Chi board that I mentioned earlier uses the exact same parts as is in the Steel Legend, but with one more phase doubler on the V-Core to give a 5x2 plus 2 design. The VRM's got a decent enough heatsink and it is screwed onto the board rather than using push pins, so mounting pressure and transfer should be pretty good. It's a standard affair, so in a case with even really minimal airflow, I can't really see you having any problem with the Steel Legend. And that's exactly what I experienced. The Steel Legend was tested in the Elian Lee O11 dynamic case using the 3700X and overclocked to 4.45 GHz across all 8 cores and 16 threads. It used a little bit less voltage than I needed on the X370 board and it was completely stable and worked flawlessly. The fact that it's going to be more than suitable should I ever feel the need to slip in a 16 core 32 thread 3950X is just the icing on the cake. So that's the X570 Steel Legend in a nutshell. It continues the interesting looks of the Steel Legend lineup, adds a whole host of new features and more forward facing technologies while still being fairly reasonably priced. I still love the look of the board and to be honest it was one of the only ones out there that ticked the box with me wanting to continue the kind of white aesthetic started with the X370 Killer SLI and the lighter themes of my Sapphire 5700 XT card. 
So all in all, it's really not too hard for me to recommend the Steel Legend to anyone that's looking for a mid-range board. I guess thumbs up from me, but I would like to know what you guys think of it. Are you digging the Steel Legend aesthetic, or is it a bit too out there for you? It's got a solid VRM, good connectivity, and does everything it says on the box. And really at this price, you can't really look for much more than that. So let me know what you think of this board, if you would buy it, if you've already bought it. And for now, I'll just say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.